Welcome to the second event organized by ESAOTE. We have some very special guests joining us today, including medical experts and Herve Barmas, a professional alpinist as well as an alpine guide, instructor, filmmaker, writer, and motivational speaker. We are going to talk about experience, particularly the experience built up over the past 40 years by ESAOTE. From the very beginning, ESAOTE focused on developing non-invasive diagnostic products and solutions, something that was later followed by informational technology for healthcare. The company's motto, never stop seeing the unseen, is the embodiment of this approach, gaining experience from every moment by collecting information and clinical needs to be turned into new technologies and solutions. It was in 1982 when the startup that would become Ezaote was created. It was set up by a group of engineers with a very clear idea of the technological and socio-economic horizons that could be opened up in the medical imaging sector, combined with a desire to turn their knowledge into tools for non-invasive diagnostic tools. The experience built up over the past 40 years is part of a movement in a constant state of evolution, aimed at opening up new avenues and exploring new possibilities in the world of healthcare, with one eye on social well-being and a clear final target. Enhancing the experience is a part of desire to create a future where accurate diagnosis and treatment are basic elements of the medical systems. And that aim is pursued with responsibility, integrity and understanding. We are going to talk about this with Mr. Franco Fontana, CEO of ESAOTE. Welcome, Mr. Fontana, to this second event, Exploring ESAOTE and its continuous innovation process. Hi, Jana. Nice to see you again. Enhancing the experience is a very significant part of the company mentality because it positions experience as a key asset for ESAOTI's developments and organization. Could you tell us how this element combine to create products which meet the strict requirements of the medical sector? You know, in 40 years of uh, experience, uh, I think we learned a lot of lessons. The first and most important one is that uh, any engineering effort uh, should be really coupled with uh, clinical needs. Uh, we talk uh, with uh, and we work with healthcare professionals every day. Uh, we listen to them, uh, we try to understand them and uh, to translate these needs into successful products. I see. It's crucial that the different areas of the company work together when it comes to developing medical equipment. What's your perception on this concept? Uh, well, uh, making and launching uh, a product uh, is always a challenge uh, from concept to, to delivery uh, in the market. Uh, it costs several years of work uh, in which uh, every person in the team plays really a crucial role. And each role is not only well defined, but they know themselves that they are playing a crucial role. It's really a, a multidisciplinary effort in which, uh, for example, physics, mechanics, engineering, software are all ingredients uh, to make a new systems. Uh, I think uh, we gain it, uh, our credibility step by step and uh, that uh, uh, allow us uh, to uh, bring a new innovation into the market. Mr. Fontana, the recent events during the COVID pandemic highlighted the need for efficient and connected healthcare systems. What's your opinion and vision on this topic? This pandemic, as uh, we have all uh, experienced, uh, according to uh, what we did, actually, was to try to react very fast to the changing needs and find a different solution to come to the market. But it's very clear that the overall healthcare system is changing. And exactly as you said, connected system, reorganization of and optimization of resources will be crucial to face similar events in the future. Uh, this reorganization uh, should be facing the needs uh, of being closer to the patients. And for us, this means making devices uh, that can be uh, really reach a larger 
a community of professionals, of help professionals, and more disciplines. Thank you very much, Mr. Fontana, for being here and sharing with us your views. Thank you. Thank you to you, Jan. We have mentioned ESAOTA's ability to simplify and improve diagnostic processes given the company experience in the area. It's fair to say that this is much more than just one of the development drivers. It's a mission. Thanks to the company's experience, it's possible to imagine a future which is as powerful as simple at the same time. And now it's time for us to meet a very special guest. It's somebody who draws on experience as he looks to explore new horizons, just like Ezaote when it creates high products like ultrasound machines. Born and raised in the shadow of the Matterhorn, he has been an alpine guide for years, and his experience shows that risk, when tackled face on, can reveal the true value of life. Ladies and gentlemen, Hervé Barmas. Welcome, Mr. Hervé. It's really a pleasure to have you here today. Nice to meet you, and Hi, everyone. As you know, we are talking about experience today. And who embodied this concept better than you? You've climbed peaks and you have a wonderful relationship with mountains, one of sensitivity, passion and love. You've shown how mountains can be accessible to all if you respect and listen to them. What does the concept of enhancing the experience mean to you? Well, it means uh, living to the fullest, following your dream with uh, hard work, commitment and ambition, knowing that sometimes there will be disappointment because uh, we cannot always win. So all the experiences, positive and negative, are something that we need if we want to learn something more about ourselves, about our weakness and at the same time about our strength. So um, at the end, uh, experiences are a gift of our life. Mr. Bamas, to you, alpinism is about adventure, risk, effort, passion and love. It's about man finding new strengths and pushing his physical and mental limits. How important is for you to have a great deal of experience at the beginning of a new adventure? I give you a practical example because on the Matron, an iconic mountain, my home mountain, I lived many experiences to my limit, but uh, this limit has changed over the years. It has moved forward. With uh, a goal I achieved, I knew that uh, I could have done better. So after many years of uh, climbing, of uh, experiences, I decided to do something special. I I tried to open it a new route alone on the Matron. It was something special also because just one person made it before me on the Matron and this person was one of the greatest alpinists ever, Walter Bonatti in the 1965. Do you have any experience with ultrasound technology? I know you sustained an injury at the start of your career. Well, uh, yes, I know the ultrasound technology because uh, I had a lot of injuries. Uh, the first one when I was uh, 16, I was uh, considered a promise of uh, international promise of alpine ski. And my dream it was to become the number one and to win the Olympic Games. But uh, at, uh, during a competition, a downhill competition at uh, 120 km per hour, I crashed it and I broke my legs, I broke uh, my arms, my head. And of course, I was young, so something also into my heart. 
but uh, so no more Olympic Games, no more number one. But uh, if I look now that experience uh, from the present to the past, I said, okay, this, it was my sliding doors because uh, after the accident, I decided to become an alpinist. And also more recently, I had a long uh, operation to my neck. So yes, definitely, I really know the ultrasound technology. <laughs> Tell us something about your most challenging adventures. Well, I tried to continue the story because after the next surgery, I decided to climb my first 8,000 meters peak. And I didn't in a different way, so I didn't follow the normal route. Uh, is the easy way to reach to the top of the 8,000, but I decided to climb that, uh, follow one of the steepest faces in the world, the south face of Shisha Pagma, with uh, no help, so no oxygen, no fixed rope, uh, no Sherpas, but just me and my partner, uh, David Göttler. And we did in only 13 hours. You have to know that uh, normally a strong alpinist, it takes from uh, five to seven days to do exactly the same too. So it was uh, like, uh, yeah, it was a record. It was a good achievement for my career. You've climbed several peaks all over the world, from the Alps to Pakistan and Patagonia. You've said that after spending so much time traveling, you realize that the value of experience has nothing to do with the mountain, but it depends only on the vision of the alpinist. Yes, it's true because the adventure is a dimension created by the human being by living new challenges and new experiences. If uh, you don't know the result of uh, what are you doing, uh, you live an adventure. So also in the mountain, you don't need maybe to go far away to go to Pakistan, Karakorum or Alaska or Patagonia or Himalaya. You just need the Alps and a different vision. If you use your imagination, your fantasy to create something that uh, has never been done, so you are an explorer and you live an adventure. Sometimes you just have to look the things around you and uh, to know that it's possible to do maybe the, the same things in a different way. So probably for someone, just when they look at the mountains, they said, oh, this is rock, ice and snow. But if you ask me something about the mountain, I tell you about love, passion and life. Thank you very much, Mr. Bamas, for being here with us and for sharing your wealth of experience with us. Really, thank you. We will continue to follow your adventure on television. I'm sure there are plenty more unforgettable moments that will come. Thank you so much, and thank you so much to Isaute. Thank you. Now, we have two guests joining us. Miss Florence Lab, Customer Marketing Manager at Esaote, and Mr. Giovanni Altobelli, Product Manager at Esaote. Miss Lab and Mr. Altobelli, welcome to this event. Thank you. Mr. Altobelli, talking about biomedical innovation and the world of non invasive diagnostics as a whole, how important is the development of medical technology at a time like this? Absolutely, especially in a period like uh, now that uh, the health uh, system is uh, really under pressure, it's really important uh, for uh, the ultrasound uh, system uh, can give a contribution. And uh, we can do because it's not an uh, invasive system, no radiation, and uh, can be used anywhere. Take the innovation in the system in the fast, easy way as possible. And what upgrades are medical sector experts asking for at a time where there's a need to speed up diagnostic process? Anytime they're asking for uh, sure, better uh, possibility to have a better diagnosis, uh, better image uh, and uh, less examination for time. This take uh, to a protocol for automatic uh, image uh, setting uh, and not only, but also for relate to the measure and also for the final uh, report of the examination. An ultrasound examination is not limited uh, to the scanning phase. In real life, our customers pay attention to the workflow, starting from the patient information to the data computation and its delivery. Thank you, Ms. Lab. And Ms. Altobelli, can daily productivity in terms of diagnosis be increased by automatic optimizations tool? Of course. 
because uh, any patient is different and uh, if you think that you have to optimize the system in any situation, the automatic way to do is give you the possibility to have the best of the system of any patient is possible. So for sure in uh, this case the optimization of the system is workflow is helping to increase the level of diagnostic as also is taking the time for the examination as short as possible. I fully agree with Giovanni. Clinicians are not engineers. They have to focus on the clinical aspects and we support them with automated tools in order to get the best images for their patients. And being able to easily move the ultrasound machine around the medical facility has a range of benefits. Do you agree with this? Yes, because move a patient, especially in a hospital environment, is really costly for organization standpoint, but not only, it can be really stressful also for the patient themselves. The possibility to go to patient side on the bedside is helping the doctor to, first of all, be more effective, more fast, and reduce the cost and more make the life of the patient easier and better than and not moving around the hospital. And I would also uh, add, since I sometimes have to move the systems along the corridors myself, that their weight is not a minor point. Uh, it's very important that the card bases have been designed as ergonomically light and agile as possible. Thank you, Ms. Lab and Mr. Altobelli, for describing the application of a technology forged through years of experience and a very clear vision. So let's take Goodbye to Mr. Altobelli. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Goodbye, and, Giovanni. And goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. And Ms. Lab, please, you stay with us. Okay. For a company like Ezaote, experience means understanding and anticipating evolving needs and trends in the medical world. Now with us today, we have Professor Fabio Piscaglia, who works in the Department of Medicine and Surgery at the Sant'Orsola Malpighi Hospital in Bologna. Welcome, Professor Piscaglia. It's a pleasure, it's an honor to be here sharing my experience with you and with all the audience. Professor Piscaglia, given the diverse nature of your activity, what do you look for in an ultrasound device? When you think about working with the routine of standard patients, uh, outpatients, they come in and go. And uh, a bit the same is also for inpatients. Uh, it is more important to have an easy to use equipment because uh, this will save you time. So the way of uh, connecting, of moving the probes, of cleaning, disinfecting, uh, obviously you need a high quality um, high quality B-mode image, the, 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 the key, the most important issue. And uh, when you think about patients in the ward, that often you have to move your equipment from one room to another, uh, it is also important that this does not take much. So if, it, for instance, a software takes long to upload when you switch on or switch off, this is not very comfortable for the uh, patients to be investigated at the bedside. So at the bedside, I would favor the quality of the B mode. Obviously, the, you, you would add also uh, Doppler, uh, but the additional features are important, but are not mandatory. Whereas they are quite important from the um, referral centers and could be an adjunctive system to facilitate in the, let's say, intermediate stage outpatient clinic. So these are, I think, the to, to facilitate the workflow, I think, that you have to keep in mind the purpose of the uh, equipment that you are going to utilize. In the last few years, we've seen the introduction of new parameters in terms of tissue assessment, such as stiffness. Do you think liver stiffness evaluation will become standard in liver ultrasound examinations? Well, actually, uh, I'm an internist, uh, I'm a director of a unit of internal medicine, but we also have a long tradition in hepatology. I don't say this will become a standard. It is already a standard. You cannot work with liver patients without having the possibility to palpate the liver and to palpate it with ultrasound, which means elastography. What we have to think is that uh, this does not only apply to liver dedicated centers, which has become obvious, and all the international societies of, of um, hepatology 
recommend to have the possibility to investigate uh, your patients with uh, uh, elastography. But uh, currently the etiology of liver disease is uh, changing. It is shifting from viral disease, alcohol-related disease, but mainly from viral disease to metabolic patients. And this implies a big difference because in the first instance, patients with viral liver disease are very well defined, very clear subgroup. You can perform the assessment in dedicated centers. Now we are facing the possibility that patients with liver disease emerge in any other setting, for instance, the diabetic clinics, which mean an enormous amount of patients, overweight patients, and this is again an enormous amount of patients. And you cannot foresee to send all these patients to dedicated uh, uh, liver units. So you should be able to focus to deliver the optimal care, which includes elastography, whenever the problem emerges. Thank you very much, Professor Piscaglia, for being with us. Bye-bye. Bye. And Ms. Lab, how do Professor Piscaglia's observations tally with your understanding of the ultrasound diagnostics panorama? Well, uh, thanks to his testimonial, we can understand their expectations and the complexity of their expertise. They have to scan so many organs and sometimes in challenging environments. It's our responsibility to help them with our systems to deliver the maximum level of information. That's also why our strategy is to integrate more and more advanced technologies like uh, connectivity tools, uh, shear wave or contrast. Azaute's philosophy is that all patients deserve the best technologies. Thank you, Ms. Lab. And now, live with us, Professor George Lefteriotis, currently heading the Physiology and Vascular Medicine Unit at the Medical School and University Hospital of Nice. Welcome, Professor Lefteriotis. Your main area of expertise at the moment is arterial stiffness. What kind of outcomes are you seeing in terms of patient follow-ups? Well, it is now uh, well demonstrated that uh, intima media thickness and uh, arterial stiffness uh, are the most uh, important variables to consider in the atherosclerotic uh, process. And in addition to the population uh, uh, cardiovascular risk score, uh, we usually use uh, these surrogate markers to provide additional information on individual risk score, such as coronary artery calcification score. So uh, this approach largely contributes to improve the personalization of medicine and care and, and has been included as a preclinical target organ damage and listed in the European uh, Society of Hypertension or uh, American Heart Association recommendations. You've been working with Esaote to develop this area since the very beginning. How does that work? Is the case where you had an idea and then you called them? Well, uh, his AOT has been a great uh, help for our projects uh, because it was one of the rare ultrasonic companies uh, to offer a specific system for accessing uh, intima media thickness and, uh, regi and uh, stiffness. Uh, they were very open to our research projects, were also a proposal force with uh, an easy access in particular to the engineers uh, in order to improve uh, certain technical aspects we had to solve. The development of research is always a tricky thing, as you know, to do uh, since it does not necessarily meet the industrial uh, objectives. And this is also a problem with the large companies where the feedback from uh, customers is always more difficult than smallest company wh where you ha can have a more direct access to the research and uh, development teams. What are the keys to taking a parameter from the research stage to routine usage? How important is collaboration? Uh, well, this is an important question and uh, also for me it's uh, an enigma. Of course, um, data obtained uh, in both small and large clinical and epidemiological trials, uh, which take huge time and funding. But it is also a question of clinical practice. If you are taking the history of blood pressure, for example, it takes decades uh, before it becomes part of the daily clinical uh, practice used to estimate, for example, the cardiovascular risk level. Blood pressure is not a perfect biomarker, as you know, and we must still fix 
uh, for other biomarkers to improve uh, patient management. But I am confident in the fact that the access to the technology and with the help of the massive data analysis and artificial intelligence, we will be able to determine the right place of these biomarkers in the arsenal of health technologies. And I think we are only at the beginning of a new era. Thank you, Professor Lefteriotis, for being with us. So, uh, arrivederci. And now we are joined by another guest, Luigi Badano, a professor of cardiovascular medicine at the University of Milano Bicocca. Welcome, Professor Welcome. Badano, to this event on ESOT technology. Thank you, Gianna. Nice to meet you. We are going to talk about the role of ultrasound technology in cardiology. Cardiac examinations by ultrasound are the most frequently requested cardiac imaging tests to assess patients with either suspected or already known heart disease. In your opinion, which are the most important features of an eco machine to provide accurate and reproducible clinical results? Oh, that's really easy. Uh, it's image quality. Image quality is key to reach an accurate diagnosis and also to obtain uh, uh, reproducible uh, measurements uh, of uh, the geometry and function of the cardiac structures. Since uh, modern uh, ultrasound systems are mainly computers, uh, image quality is driven by the probe. And so it's in the um, building of the probe that uh, most of the research and the efforts should be implemented. Thank you, Professor Badano. Actually, Esaote as a center of excellence here in Italy, um, in Florence, where um, I qualified engineers and technicians design our models and uh, drive then the production. It allows us uh, to control perfectly the chain of the image, uh, which starts always with uh, the probe. Thank you, Ms. Lab. And Mr. Badano, why do you think Mario cardiac strain measurement has become an integral part of routine examinations? Well, uh, there are two kinds of reasons. The first one, it's easy. It's performed on conventional grayscale two-dimensional images that are routine in a clinical echocardiographic study. It's um, largely automated and highly reproducible, and this is uh, good for uh, clinicians. The second reason is because it's clinically relevant. It provides an added piece of information behind the conventional ejection fraction since it measures the function of the myocardial muscle. And this is particularly important when you want to make an early subclinical assess, an early diagnosis of the subclinical impairment of myocardial function. That's relevant, for example, in patients receiving potentially cardiotoxic drugs like chemotherapy in cancer patients or patients with heart diseases like heart valve diseases or cardiomyopathies. Cardiac examination by ultrasound follow a standardized protocol. What does this all to do to take your workflow into account? The collaboration between uh, clinicians and engineers or application specialists is uh, a key to improve the workflow. For example, uh, the position of the knobs and the buttons on the keyboard or uh, uh, the flow of uh, the parameters and uh, the various information in the touch screen that uh, should follow the cardiac structure and the technique that uh, you are using in that particular patient. This makes our life easier and shortens uh, ultrasound examinations. Thank you very much, Professor Badano, for your previous contribution. And Ms. Lab, thank you for your help. You're welcome. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you very much. We have seen how Isaote and medical science have the same aim, to constantly accumulate experience to make diagnostic processes easier in order to ensure patient treatment quickly. We have come to the end of this second installment of Exalted Technology. Please don't miss the third event. Thanks for watching. We'll leave you with the thoughts of some Exalted employees. Firstly, we must convince ourselves that technology is made for supporting human beings and not the opposite. We have to make the maximum effort to keep the focus on men, women, 
children and animals who benefit from our technology. The technical knowledge of the product is the base, but then also the relationship with the doctor is fundamental. So our job is to make their life as easy as possible, so to, to make easier even the most advanced technology. And when for them the use of the product is easy, our job is, uh, is done. The daily activities we are driving every day, uh, we have the opportunity to search and to think by ourselves, to create and imagine uh, new scenarios that will be helpful for our team, for our customers, or more generally speaking, the neighborhood. Every single day we work hard to satisfy what the market and the customer needs and we give our experience, our skill to improve all the stuff, all the technology or all the innovation. We can open the door to new frontiers in terms of productivity, um, diagnostic reliability, comfort. Try to look forward, to have vision and to uh, to exploit uh, the, the, the new technologies and put the Italian DNA in the innovation to, to be leader. It's a win-win relationship, but the real winner is the patient.